Hello Periscope and hello Facebook. Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly live prophetic word. Super excited about the word of God today as always. So let's jump right on in. Thanks through faith, oh God. Thank you for the justification that is found in Jesus Christ and his blood. Thank you for our positional righteousness before your God. And then we ask you to let our conditional righteousness be pleasing in your sight. Let us walk as righteous, live as righteous, walk as, as the people you've called us to be. So right now, fill me with the Spirit, O oh God. Take over. Fill my mind, my heart, my lips, my body, my tongue, my gestures, everything. Trying to, okay, now my connection's back, that's right. So now we're going to jump right in. Today's prophetic word is, and he healed them all. Today's prophetic word to the saints is, and he healed them all. Who is the he that I'm talking about? I'm talking about Jesus. What does healed mean? Well, that's obvious. It means made well, made whole. Who is the them that I'm talking about? That's all the people that came to Jesus. And all means all. All means all inclusive. There's nothing on the other side of all. All means all. Now, what's the point of the prophetic word today? I have discovered that you sometimes you have to labor really hard to convince some Christians that they're supposed to be healed. That their God is able to heal you. And that God wants to heal you. And that healing is a part of your inheritance. Healing is a part of your benefits package in Jesus Christ. I've discovered from growing up in America and dealing with Western American Protestants my whole life that there are a lot of people that it seems like you have to labor very hard to convince them that what I just said, that God wants to heal you, God's able to heal you no matter what your ailment, that God will heal you through faith, and that healing is a part of your inheritance. But as the scripture says, healing is the children's bread. I'm also going to show you this scripture before we get into the other scriptures, because I'm going to show you where the error comes from. Okay? We are going to look at Psalm 103, and I'm going to show you the error, the basic error where this uh, so many of this wrong teaching and wrong doctrine comes from, then I'm going to show you some more scriptures. But remember, the prophetic word today is, and he healed them all. He, Jesus, made well all those that came to him, and there was not one person that wasn't healed. Okay? So right now turn to Psalm, the book of Psalms, right in the middle of the Bible. Okay, the book of Psalms, chapter 103. I'm going to be reading out of the King James Version, the book of Psalms, Chapter 103, I'm going to be reading out of the King James Version. Okay? We are going to uh, read verses 1 through 6, and I'm going to show you where the error comes from. Psalm 103 starts out, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 6. Now I'm going to show you where the error is. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. What? All his benefits. Forget not. Now, if the Bible says forget not, that means it's possible to forget. So King David is admonishing us to not forget all the benefits of the Lord. It says don't forget all his benefits. And then right after that, what does King David do? He lists the benefits. Now, as you come on, please like and share. Because when the Lord releases a prophetic word, it needs to go around the world. There are people that are going to be blessed by this word. People that are going to be encouraged by this word. People that are going to be healed as they listen to this word. So as you come on, please like this video and please share in as many places as you can. Okay? So, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He then proceeds to list the benefits. And here they go. He says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Benefit one. Who healeth all thy diseases? Two. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Three. Who crowneth thee with love and kindness? Four. And tender mercies? Five. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle? Six. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Righteousness? Seven. Judgment? Eight. Look at that. Eight benefits in those verses. And do you know what, what good Western American Christian people do? They just preach forgiveness. It just blows my mind. If I could tell you the number of conversations I've had with good Christian people over the years who, if you ask them, what would you say to an unbeliever? What would you say to a sinner about Jesus? They would say, God wants to forgive you because you have no hesitation in your mind that the Lord will forgive you. And here it says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Now, just as an aside, if you don't know the difference between sin, transgression, and iniquity, here it is. Sin is when you miss the mark. Sin is making a mistake. Sin is falling short. Sin is anything that's not like God. That's why all of us have sinned. Transgression is where you know where the line is and you cross the line anyway. Iniquity is where you know where the line is, you cross the line anyway, and then you try to act like you didn't do anything wrong. And the Bible says that God is so good, he will even forgive you for iniquity. He will even forgive you when, when you knew where the line was. You cross the line on purpose, and then you try to act like you didn't do anything wrong. If you repent and confess your sins, God will forgive you even for that. Because that's how good God is. And that's what Americans preach, is forgiveness, and then they stop. The name of that mistake, what that is called is, that's called fracturing the unity of Scripture. One more time, that mistake, that error is called fracturing the unity of Scripture. It means that God has a complete thought, that the Spirit of God has breathed through the writer, and you go in and extract part of that thought, partial thought, and then you believe and teach things that are against what the Scripture actually says. Because I have met a lot of good Christian people that say, Oh, yes, God wants to forgive you. God will forgive you of anything. That's what the blood of Jesus is for, without hesitation. And then out that very same mouth, they'll say, if it's his will to heal me. You know that it's his will to forgive you. The very next promise, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, Psalm 103.3, the very next promise says, who healeth all thy diseases. And then you have people praying prayers and saying things like, if it's his will to heal me. Okay? And then I showed you all those other benefits. God will redeem your life from destruction. God, God will crown you with loving kindness. That means he'll put a crown on your head that has to do with his loving kindness and tender mercies. God will be gentle with you. He is not a brutal father. That's the devil and the beast. God is gentle. He'll crown you with tender mercies, satisfy your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God will renew your youth and give you energy as you go through life. The Lord will execute righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. All those benefits are for those that believe. All of them. And people fracture the unity of scripture and just preach forgiveness. And I, I, oh, I have seen people... Let their kids die because they wouldn't believe that God would heal them. I'm not exaggerating that, and I'm not making that up. People I know personally that have let their own children die talking about they don't believe in divine healing. 
and it's right there in the Bible. It's right after forgiveness, which every Christian believes in, but they're talking about if it's his will and blah, 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 and none of that is script. I'm going to show you how unscriptural that is, but I'm showing you now where the error comes from because Psalm 103, second part of the verse, or part B, says, who healeth all all thy diseases. There is nothing that ails you that God can't heal or that God won't heal because that is a part of your benefits package for being a believer. And the same way you embrace the blood of Jesus for your forgiveness, you must embrace the blood of Jesus for your healing. I'm going to say that one more time. The same way you embrace without hesitation you will tell any sinner, anytime you share in your testimony, anytime you're trying to lead somebody to Christ, you don't have to say, if it's God's will to forgive me. Have you ever said that? The same way you embrace the blood of Jesus for your forgiveness, you embrace the blood of Jesus for your healing. It's the same blood and it's part of the same benefits package. Forgiveness and healing. Redemption from destruction, that means if your life is going to be destroyed, God will buy it back. God will bring you back from the brink of, of destruction. God will uh, crown you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He'll be gentle with you. He'll put a crown of his gentleness on your head. He'll give you good things to renew your youth and energy as you go through life. He's going to execute righteousness if you're oppressed. In other words, my pastor preached about it this morning. God is not going to sit back and let oppressed people stay oppressed. And he's going to execute judgment if you're oppressed. All those are your benefits in Christ. Dave, King David starts out the psalm by saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, verse 2, and forget not all, all his benefits. So from this day forward, those of you that are watching, watching this broadcast, I am charging you. In the name of Jesus Christ, did you believe, preach, and teach, and stand on the word of God for healing the same way you do for forgiveness? Do not let another day, another moment in your Christian life go by where you say foolish things like, if it's his will to heal me. Because you never say if it's his will to forgive me. Because you know God wants to forgive you. And you know that God has provided forgiveness through the blood of Jesus. Well, he also provided all the other benefits. And the second one is healing. Okay, so that's where the error comes from, fracturing the unity of Scripture, and so many people do it. So not one more day out of your life will you ever say the words, if it's his will to heal me, because it is. The same blood that forgives you is the same blood that heals you. All right, now we're going to jump to the New Testament, and I'm going to show you what the Bible actually says. And like I just said, there is not one more day you are going to go through your life talking about if it's God's will to hear me, to heal me. Okay? We're going to start with Matthew chapter 15 verse 30. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. Okay? And Matthew was one of the 12 that walked with Jesus. So Matthew had a a, a personal eye view account of the Lord. Okay? We're going to turn to Matthew chapter 15, verse 30. And it says this. Uh, I think I'm going to read out of the King James Version to start, but I'm going to read some extra versions. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Great multitudes, that's a lot of people, came unto the Lord, and they had with them people that were lame. So normally to be lame means uh, you, can't, you don't have full use of your appendages. Your legs or your arms normally is what people are talking about when you're lame. Your legs or your feet and your ankles don't work, or your hands or your elbows or your shoulders or your arms don't work. Uh, lame, blind, blind means you can't see. Mute, you can't talk. Okay, maimed uh, means you've been hurt. You've been hurt like in a war and you lost a limb or you had an accident. Okay, and uh, I already went over mute. That's also dumb. 
and many others and cast them down at Jesus' feet. They brought him to the Lord's feet, and the Bible says, and he healed them. He healed them. Now, verse uh, 31 says this. The crowd was amazed uh, when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled restored, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they glorified the God of Israel. King James says, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, and the blind to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. They glorified God. Why did they glorify God? Because they understood that this was the work of God. Don't miss it. Healing is the work of God. There was no situation, no person that they brought to Jesus that the Lord couldn't heal or didn't heal. And they glorified God. So, never let the words come out your mouth again that I'm glorifying God in my sickness. No, you're not. <laughs> they glorified God to see the healing. It's the healing that glorifies God. Sickness comes from sin. Sickness comes from our own disobedience. Where we're not treating our bodies right. Sickness comes from Satan. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Where whenever you're dealing with sickness and healing, you've got to rebuke a devil. Haven't you ever known some people that are chronically ill, they just ill with the same thing their whole life? That's the devil. Or something, or some type of health practice that you're doing wrong over and over again. But either way, it's your right to be healed in Christ. And there's no situation that they gave the Lord. Blind people, people that couldn't talk, people that were lame, and people that had, had accidents or been hurt in war. The Lord healed all of them, and the people marveled. The crowd was amazed, and they glorified the God of Israel because they understood that healing is what glorifies God, not sickness. Healing is what glorifies God, not being maimed or lame or mute or blind. That's not what glorifies God when you are not full and whole in your full capacity. What glorifies God is healing. Okay, now we're going to look at Matthew uh, 12, 15. Matthew 12, 15, same book, different chapter, Matthew 12, 15. And it says this. Well, let's uh, start back at verse 14. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. Large crowds followed them. And he healed them all. Berean literal Bible. And Jesus, having known, withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. New King James Version. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. So the Bible says that they were threatening to kill the Lord, and the Lord became aware of it, so he moved on. But a whole lot of people followed him. And the Bible says, and he healed them all. He, he did not heal some of them. <laughs> he healed them all. So you may ask, because I remember I asked this when I was a little boy, and then my son asked the same question when he was a little boy. I said, if there's stuff that we see in the Bible, why don't we see it out in life? Why don't we see it practiced? And the answer to that question is, because you have to preach it and teach it. You have to preach it. Uh, and you have to be anointed to preach it and teach it so the people can hear it and so they can believe it. Amen, Sally. Every one of them he healed. So people can hear it and their faith can be built up for healing. If you never hear preaching and teaching on healing, that's why your faith is so small. Because we have to preach it and teach it like the Lord did. Okay? He healed them all. Okay? I want to read to you Matthew 4.23. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and here it is, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. That means STDs, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, HIV. That means bone cancer, breast cancer, uh, prostate cancer, uh, liver cancer, throat cancer. That means... Uh, anything you can think of, arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, you name it, scoliosis. The Bible says he healed every disease, dis-ease, and sickness among the people. There was no disease or sickness that Jesus couldn't heal and didn't heal right there in the Bible. So I'm going to say it one more time. Don't go one more day out of your life after today talking about if it's God's will to heal me. 
Yes, it is. Okay, we're going to look at Luke, the book of Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke is the third book in the New Testament. This is where the Lord um, healed Peter's mother-in-law. Luke chapter 4, verse 38 and 39. Now he arose, Jesus, now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. That's Peter, Simon Peter, one of his best friends. Now he arose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife, Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made a request of him, Jesus, concerning her. So he, Jesus, stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and served them. Now, we have to study that a little bit more carefully. Okay, the scripture says that he rebuked the fever. Okay, coming out of the Greek, that word means to admonish or censure or by implication forbid. So in other words, what the Lord said was, I forbid this fever to be in your body. I forbid you to be sick. I forbid this fever to have dominion over you. That's what he said to Peter's mother-in-law. And the Bible says the fever left her and she felt better so fast that she got up and started cooking some food to serve them. So what does that teach us? That teaches us that when we're dealing with sickness, we have to rebuke it. You have to tell sickness that it has no power, no dominion, no authority over you or in the space that you're in. That it's not allowed to stay. Why? Because that's the way the Lord did it. He didn't say be healed. The Bible says he stood over her and rebuked the fever. He rebuked the fever. He told the fever that was in Peter's mother-in-law's body, you got no place here. You got no dominion here. I forbid you to stay inside of her body. I forbid you to be in this space. And it left her. And she didn't get well gradually. <laughs> it left her and she got up and started cooking some vittles. So you know she felt better. Okay? All right. We're going to look at Matthew uh, chapter 8, verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. This one is also really, really important. Uh, Berean Study Bible, Matthew 8, 16. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to Jesus, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. Oh, my goodness. That verse is so action-packed, I could just speak on that for like a year. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed, and that word there, possessed, is better translated oppressed, uh, but that's a whole nother thing to, to break down. Because uh, some people actually are demon-possessed, but some people are oppressed by a demon, which isn't the same thing. A demon that has control of your life is one thing, but a demon that's trying to hinder you and stop you, that's oppression, that's different. Okay. Many who were demon-possessed were brought to Jesus, and he drove out the spirits with a word. There it is. When you're dealing with sickness, you've got to rebuke a demon. You've got to rebuke a demon. If you're dealing with blinded eyes, you've got to rebuke a demon of blindness. And this morning in service, the Lord gave me a word about healing. This also applies to infertility. If you want to have children, if you're a woman and you want, or, or man and you want to have children and you haven't been able to conceive, you've got to rebuke a spirit of infertility because God is a God of fertility, abundance. The first commandment he gave the first family was what? Be fruitful and multiply. Okay? So you're going to have to rebuke a spirit of infertility if you're trying to have a baby and you haven't been able to conceive so far. Because that's what the Bible teaches, that you've got to drive out the spirits with a word. And then it says, and he healed all the sick. New American Standard Bible, same verse. When evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were ill. Mm. He healed all that were ill. How many did he heal? All of them. I want you to notice something else. I want you to notice that never once in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John does Jesus ever say, for the glory of God, you have to stay sick. That is not in the Bible. How many people, especially if you come from a church background, have you heard people talk about how they suffering for the Lord and they going through and God is testing me and all these ridiculous things that people say that aren't in the Bible because the Lord said no matter what was going on with demon possession, demon oppression, 
different kinds of sickness. When they brought them people to Jesus, he healed all of them. He drove out the demons. He drove out the fever, blind people, people that couldn't speak, people who couldn't use their legs or their arms, and people that got hurt in accidents or war. And he healed all of them. That means the Lord grew some new limbs. That means some people were missing a forearm, and he grew the forearm back. That means that some people were missing a hand, he grew the hand back. Okay, that means that some people were missing their feet. You've seen how sometimes people come home from war, and they're in wheelchairs. The Lord grew their legs back. The Lord grew their feet back. Well, Prophet Taylor, why don't we see more stuff like that in today's church? Because you have to believe it. That's why these people believed it. The nation of Israel had a history of miracles from God, and they knew that God was a God of miracles. That means they had faith for miracles. That's how you get miracles to manifest today, because the Lord didn't change and the Word didn't change. So that must mean that we must be doing something wrong. Okay? But you got to preach it. That's why I'm preaching it, teaching it, and prophesying it. You got to preach it so the people can hear it so you can believe it. So like I said, the takeaway from today's lesson is that you will no longer for the rest of your life ever talk about if it's God's will to hear me. Because I've shown you scripture after scripture after scripture where it is his will to hear you, is heal you, is part of your benefits package as a believer. And there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Barren wombs, broken limbs, missing limbs, blindness, deafness, dumbness, demon possession, demon oppression, paralyzed. All manner of sickness and disease had to go in the name of Jesus. It could not stay when the Lord was there. The Lord cast out the demon, the Lord rebuked the fever, and the Lord healed the people. Okay? Again, scripture after scripture after scripture. Matthew 14, 36. Now this one, if you're familiar with the story of the woman with the issue of blood, that's why you hear me say all the time, you can't preach the Bible like it's a highlight reel. So, so many people preach and teach the Bible like it's a movie highlight reel. Like we're just going to focus on the real spectacular stuff or, or the real famous stuff. You know, like it's a movie. Bibles, it's not like that. Okay, but Matthew 4 and 4 says, Man shall not, mankind shall not live by, every, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's why you got to read the Bible for yourself. So, you are probably familiar if you have any type of church experience with the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Long story short, she had internal hemorrhaging. She had spent all the money she had because she has some money. She spent all her money on doctors and they couldn't help her. She heard about Jesus. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garden, I'll be made whole. She pushed her way through the crowd and she reached out and grabbed Jesus' uh, cloak from behind, pulled the virtue out of him, and then the Lord turned around and said, who touched me? Jesus wasn't even looking at her. <laughs> But she said, she used her faith, and she said, if I but touch the hem of his garden, I shall be made whole. Reached up and pulled the virtue out of the Lord, and immediately she was healed. You're probably familiar with that story. I stopped by to tell you, that's not the only time that happened. Okay? Matthew 14, 36. Uh, well, let's start at verse 40, uh, 35. Matthew chapter 14, verses 35 and 36. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding region. People brought all the sick to him and begged him, verse 36, and begged him just to let them touch the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched him were healed. They begged him, please, Jesus, let me, just let me touch the fringe of your garment, your coat, your cloak. Let me just touch the edge of your coat. And all who touched him were healed. All who touched him were healed. A Berean literal Bible. And were begging him that only they might touch the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched were cured. So the woman with the issue of blood is not the only person in the Bible that touched the hem of Jesus' garment and got healed. There were a lot of people that touched the hem of his garment and got healed. You know why? Because they believed. They believed and they knew that if they touched Jesus, they would get uh, healed and they would be 100% perfectly whole. So I know you will ask again, why don't we see those kind of miracles in church? Because you have to hear it and believe it. You have to believe on that level because the Lord said, according to your faith, so it is unto you. 
And in every situation I read you, those people believed they would be healed. They were like, if we can just get to Jesus, we'll get healed. They believed. And in so many of our religious situations, people just don't believe or they don't have that level of faith or they don't understand that healing is just as much a part of your inheritance as eternal life and forgiveness of sin. You understand? So from this day forward, you be an ambassador of the word. That's why you hear me say it all the time that you got to read the Bible for yourself. We need apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to help us, to feed us, to be account so we can be accountable to them, to give us authority so we can stay in order in the body of Christ. But no spiritual leader, every spiritual leader is there to help you in your relationship with God. They're not there to substitute in your relationship with God. You've got to have your own relationship with God, and you've got to read the Bible for yourself. So from this day forward, based on all the scriptures I've given you, not only do you never say again, if it's his will to heal me, but from now on, you start preaching and teaching because you'll see the healing start to manifest in your life. Let me say that one more time. As you begin to preach and teach and prophesy this word that has been released to you today, you will see the healing start to manifest in your life. It's going to blow your mind how once you get into the healing flow, once you speak the word of God, once you believe the word of God, once you charge your ears and your spirit with faith because you hear yourself say it. Did you know you could increase your faith by preaching to yourself? That's what the woman with the issue of blood did. Remember that the Lord wasn't even looking at her. <laughs> Remember that the Lord did not initiate that miracle. She did. Because she said, and when you look at the verb tense, it says that she kept saying, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And that's how you build your faith. You keep saying it. You keep hearing yourself say it. That charges your spirit with faith. And she reached out through a crowd of people, probably low to the ground, and grabbed the Lord because she grabbed the hem of his garment. She grabbed the bottom of his cloak. And she pulled her healing out of Jesus. The Lord was not even looking at her. Then he turned around and said, who touched me? Because he felt the virtue grow out. Do you understand? She used her faith. She confessed and believed and confessed and believed and reached out and touched Jesus and got her healing. So from this day forward, you be an ambassador of this word that was released today. And all the scriptures that I've read in your hearing, that the Bible says that healing is just as much a part of my inheritance as forgiveness. The same blood of Jesus that forgives me, heals me. That there is no situation of healing that is too tough for Jesus. That when we come across things, we have to rebuke them. You got to rebuke the fever. You got to rebuke the blindness. You got to rebuke the demons. If there is a demon of paralysis, a demon of cancer, a demon of brokenness, because you can have broken mind, broken emotions, broken heart. You can go through something in life and it breaks your heart and then an unclean spirit comes in your life and tries to convince you that you have to stay heartbroken. That's a demon because no, you don't. If your heart got broken, the Bible says that the Lord is here to, here to heal the brokenhearted. You do not have to live the rest of your life with a broken heart. Did you know that? But you say, Prophet Taylor, I had a bad divorce. God will heal your heart. But Prophet Taylor, my parents abused me. God will heal your heart. But Prophet Taylor, I've, I've suffered from racism. God will heal your heart. But Prophet Taylor, they don't like me in my job, but God will heal your heart. Because I showed you the scriptures where it says there was no situation that was too tough for Jesus. And over and over and over again, the Bible actually says that he healed them all. Not one time, not one time did the Lord not only heal everything, but he healed everyone. That means that's what our church services, and anytime we gather together as saints, that's what's supposed to happen. People with wheelchairs, people on walkers, people on canes, people with incurable diseases are supposed to come up to the front. We're supposed to lay hands on them. They're supposed to get up out that wheelchair. They're supposed to get up. They're supposed to throw that cane down. Those eyes are supposed to come open. If there is anything in the body that's not right, that disease is supposed to come out, but you got to rebuke it. Remember when you're dealing with a demon, you got to call it by name. You have to rebuke throat cancer. you got to say, in the name of Jesus, spirit of throat cancer, come out. 
in Jesus' name. And many times you need to put a hand motion. Now, normally what I do is I have people do it themselves because I'm always trying to teach people to practice self-healing in Jesus' name. Don't get the idea that, you know, it's good to go around apostles and prophets and get a prophetic word and get all that. But you can do it at home. You can do it through your faith. So I always, I'm always teaching people, learn how to lay hands on yourself. And wherever you are feeling something, put your hand on it and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke a spirit of throat cancer. I command you to come out. I forbid you to live in my body and watch what happens. Whatever you're dealing with, but you got to be specific. You see that? And I'm, I'm adamant. Okay, I'm adamant that we are supposed to preach and teach and believe and walk in this just like we preach and teach and walk in forgiveness. And that word shalom, uh, that word shalom is translated uh, in many different ways. One of the things it means is peace, but it also means nothing missing, nothing broken. So when you say the peace of God, the shalom of God, it, does, it doesn't just mean peace of mind. That's a part of the package, but it means there's not supposed to be anything broken or missing in your life. You understand that? You are not supposed to be chronically ill if you're a believer. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, I don't care how long you've been struggling with something, you ain't supposed to carry it all your days. You can get healed right now if you believe it. You got to do just what I said. You got to speak specifically to that thing. If, if you got stomach problems, if you got teeth problems, if you got bone marrow problems, if you got infertility problems, God will give you children if you want to have children. Now, there's some more stuff that goes along with that, too, because many times God is trying to send specific people into the world through the wombs of his daughters. So God wants you to ask him, who is this in my womb? So the Lord can tell you who he's sending into the world. But that's a whole, I have to teach on that another time because that's a whole deep thing, like Hannah and Samuel, that whole thing. But I want you to know, if you're looking at me today, looking at me today, and you're a couple that's been trying to have a baby, God will give you the power to conceive. OK, but you have to believe it. So. In conclusion, I want you to know that the prophet again, the prophetic word for today is and he healed them all. And I showed you in the scripture, scripture after scripture after scripture, how true that is. OK, now I'm going to close my eyes and pray in tongues and ask the Holy Ghost. Is there more he wants me to release? So here we go. For behold, my people, says the Lord, this is an area that has grieved me. For my people have not believed my entire word. My people have not claimed and walked in their promises. Therefore, this day I release unto you a new spirit of faith for healing. Therefore, I release unto you a new spirit of health. Therefore, I release unto you a new spirit of faith for shalom, for peace, that you might believe that I want you healthy and I want you whole and I died and allowed my body to be broken so your body could be whole, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Let me ask the Lord if there's anything else, but I receive that. And the Lord is also saying that this is part of your prosperity, that prosperity is not just money. What good is your money going to do if you're not healthy enough to spend it and enjoy your life? The Lord is saying that health and healing is the children's portion and the children's meat. And this is just as much a part of prosperity as money. See, so we've been charged today. OK, we've been charged today to go forth and preach and teach what the Bible actually says and let it manifest in your life first. Let it manifest in your life first. Begin to speak the scriptures I read to you today. Begin to realize that those people got healed because they believed in healing. And as you begin to hear the word of God coming out of your mouth, and as you hear it, even in your own voice, you'll see that your spirit will begin to charge with faith for healing, and the healing will manifest. And not only will it manifest in your life, but you'll be able to share this word with others. So please like and share this video because this is a word from God that needs to go all around the world. I want you to imagine something. I want you to imagine all the Christians that are out there that have been suffering from broken bodies for whatever reason all this time because nobody ever told them you don't have to stay broken. 
What about all the people that have been suffering from broken hearts? Because, man, if you ever had a bad, a bad breakup, if you ever lost a job that you loved, if you ever couldn't go to the school you wanted to go to, you're just heartbroken. You don't have to stay that way. So I want you to imagine all the people out there in the world that have been carrying pain that they didn't have to carry because the Lord just told us through the Spirit, through the prophetic word, that the reason he allowed his body to be broken was so that our bodies don't have to stay broken. Oh my goodness, do you understand the power of that? Do you understand the power of Jesus' promise and his sacrifice? Okay, so once again, I say it literally every week. I'm not saying anything to you that I'm not doing myself. So I'm incorporating all these uh, words, all this preaching, all this teaching, these prophetics into my life, and I want you to incorporate them in your life. Okay? And from this day forward, believe and he healed them all. Now, let me say this last bit, and then I'll be through. Now, remember, you also have to follow uh, what I call health obedience to the Lord, meaning after you get delivered from demons... And after you get sickness and fevers broken off of you, and after you get restored, you must then practice good health practices. So the Holy Spirit will begin to deal with you about your diet, and the Holy Spirit will begin to deal with you about your exercise. I must uh, state that as well, because some people get the wrong idea that since God wants to heal me, then I can just go off and live any kind of way I want to, and then just claim my healing from God. No, you can't, because the Bible says, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. The Bible says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So in other words, you don't live recklessly and then pop your fingers at God and ask him, it doesn't work that way because God's not a genie. But after you get healed and delivered from anything, then the Spirit of God will begin to deal with you on your health practices, the amount of stress in your life, your diet, uh, how much you eat, what kind of stuff you eat, um, your exercise level, what kind of exercise you do, and your rest. Okay, because all that feeds into the health of your temple, your clay body. You see what I mean? You have to let God deal with you on that too. Okay, all right. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. But I'm super excited. I'm super excited about the scriptures. I'm super excited about the prophetic word of God. And I'm super excited about taking an even stronger stand for healing and realizing you can forbid sickness to be in your life. You can rebuke it out of your body, and other people's bodies, okay? And we got to confess and we got to believe. So if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. All right, I don't see anything. Now, if you put them up there and I'm not seeing it, I will check after I get through with the broadcast and I will pray if I didn't see it because sometimes I can't see everything in real time, okay? All right, amen and God bless. Thank you, thank you for those of you. Okay, Sally, we're going to play for jobs and children. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Uh, praying to you, oh God, on behalf of Sally, that you would give her the job that she needs, that you would show her how to get into your perfect will and get her into the cash flow she needs to take care of her responsibilities uh, for the children. And we know you're move on, moving on that situation right now, even as we speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, God, Sally is telling me once again, he's got some more for you. He's got some entrepreneurial stuff for you. He's already put some stuff inside of you that if you develop it and feed it and bring it up to where it needs to be, it's going to produce finances for you. So once again, there's more in you, Sally, that God wants to bring out. Okay? So seek the Lord on that front and be sure you're obedient to everything that God is telling you he wants you to do. Okay? That's what happens many times when we pray for money. God gives us ideas. And God will tell you that you have to learn how to harvest what he already put inside of you. And that's where your finances are going to come from. The increase that you're looking for from self-development and not necessarily manna. Although sometimes manna does fall, but we have to develop ourselves as well. Okay? All right. Any other prayer requests? All right. Well, praise God. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, as always, on my Facebook Live page, I put all the links to all the other different places because this is on Periscope and then in about an hour to be on YouTube. So please like and share this video in as many places as you can. I have my prophetic devotional coming out uh, next year. It's going to hit January 1st. Well, I probably should put it on. I'm trying to see. It'll probably hit January 1st, but it starts with January 1st. So maybe I'll put it on sale uh, right after Christmas so you can get it. But it's going to be a prophetic devotional for every day of the year. It's going to be released quarter by quarter. So you can begin to walk in the prophetic more in your life. 
I know there are a lot of people that want to walk in deeper levels of the prophetic, but maybe you go to a church that doesn't really teach that or you don't know how. So I created a devotional whereby we're going to look at a prophetic scripture every day and you're going to pray over it, meditate on it, and let the Lord speak to you through it. That's coming out uh, in 2020, January 1st, 2020, but I'll probably put it on sale before then because on January 1st, I want you to get started, okay? There's a scripture for every day of the year, okay? So uh, I'll show you when I get that together. I'll, I'll show you a copy and all that, but I'm, I'm working on getting that together, and I'm so excited about it. I've been working on it for a very long time, but I want to help you walk in the prophetic, okay? Especially those of you that don't. I'm blessed to go to a church where my pastor is an apostle and a prophet and an evangelist and a pastor and a teacher. He flows in all five. He does all five, seriously, uh, uh, Apostle John Eckhart. So I'm blessed to go to his church because my pastor is on it, strong in the word, strong in the prophetics, you know, so I, I, I'm in a prophetic environment. But some of you, I know you go to churches that don't really flow in the apostolic and the prophetic, but you want to grow in the prophetic. So again, I've created a devotional so that you can begin to study prophetic scriptures and begin to let the Lord speak to you from them. And then you begin your own prophetic study to help you grow. OK, so, yeah, so I'll, I'll keep you posted on that as, that as that is coming out. Don't forget to look at my No More Genies broadcast. I just did a broadcast 30, Thursday night. Don't forget to look at that because I'm talking about uh, uh, we do it wrong. I'm talking about preaching what Jesus actually preached, and I'm going through the parables of Christ when he teaches about the kingdom. So don't forget to look at that from last Thursday, and then I'll be on next month because I do those once a month on the second Thursday of every night. And then I'll be on a week from today, next Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, my regular time, okay? So please like and share this video. Thank you so much for those of you that watch me live. Uh, God bless those of you that watch me live and on the replay. And I hope that this ministry is a blessing to you. And you hear me say it every week. I count it as an honor and a privilege to be used by God because God does not need me. God gave me an opportunity to work in his kingdom. And I say that because I want to encourage you to accept your call in God and work in his kingdom, okay? Because there is no greater honor or joy or path of life than to serve God, okay? Amen. God bless you, and I will see you next week. Have a good week, and remember that healing is your portion. Amen.